Hello everyone and welcome to the Today in True Crime and Portraits podcast. I'm your host, Jane Flowers. Today's episode is about portrait photography. I am going to give you an overview of photographer William Eggleston's photograph called Untitled 1970-3, The Red Room, while speaking about William's close friendship he has with director David Lynch. As well, I'm going to talk about David Lynch's Festival of Disruption and speak about photos that William Eggleston took of my father and his home that he put on exhibition at David Lynch's Festival of Disruption. You will also learn how William's photography influences David Lynch's work. I am a huge advocate of Transcendental Meditation, so I'm also going to talk about Transcendental Meditation and how David Lynch's foundation has funded education for many people who want to learn about Transcendental Meditation. In this episode, I will also give you a track review of the band Flying Lotus song Fire is Coming featuring David Lynch. David played this song at his Festival of Disruption, and I want you all to learn more about it because in many ways, it reminds me of my father, U.S. Navy veteran dentist Dr. Tom Boring and his unsolved murder. I would think that David Lynch was inspired to write the lyrics to the song, Fire is Coming, from his friend William Eggleston's photograph called Untitled 1970-3, The Red Room, and my father, U.S. Navy veteran dentist Dr. Tom Boring's Unsolved Murder. For those who are not familiar with my father's unsolved murder, then let me please fill you in quickly about how he died and where he died and when he died. My father, U.S. Navy veteran dentist Dr. Tom Boring, from smoke inhalation at his residence that was once located at 103 Virginia Street in Greenwood, Mississippi. But William Eggleston begs to differ as to how my father was murdered and where he was murdered. William tells people that my father died from an axe hitting him in his head. Yet no murder weapon was ever recovered at the crime scene where my father died in his home that burned up with him inside of it. I will speak in detail about my father's unsolved murder on another episode at a later date and also speak to you about how William Eggleston uses the photos that he took of my father and his home while putting false claims with them about Tom's life and unsolved murder to make millions of dollars for his benefit and gain. It is unknown to me if David Lynch is even aware that his good friend William Eggleston is selling false claims with photos of my father's home and nude pictures of him and his penis. If he isn't aware, I hope he is soon. If he listens to this podcast, then he will be by now. Despite all these false claims that William is selling with photos of my father and his home, William is still quite popular within the fine art photography community and film community. Many people all over the world are fans of William's work, especially director David Lynch. David Lynch has been a fan of William Eggleston's photography and films for years now. You can also see how William Eggleston's photography rubs off and David's films. You see David's dreamlike vision that is inspired by William Eggleston's photograph portrayed in his films such as Twin Peaks and in 
Twin Peaks Firewalk, which is a prequel to Twin Peaks. David Lynch has his own version of the Red Room that you can see that is found in the film Twin Peaks. I wrote about David's dreamlike vision in my father's biography called The True Legacy of Dr. Tom Boring, an Unsolved Murder Mystery Biography, and I want to share with you all what I said. On page 108 to page 110, I said this. Another photograph that was taken by William at Tom's home on MacArthur Street sometime in the early 70s has been shown at portrait exhibitions and at art galleries in London and New York is called Untitled 1970-3, The Red Room. You see in this photo, like you do its predecessor, The Red Ceiling, a blood-colored, high-gloss, red-painted walls centered in the middle of the photo is a window that has the trim of the windows painted in a black, shiny, glossy color and the panes of the window have been painted in red to hide the events that play out day and night within the room. In the far right corner of the room, you see the corner of a mattress with a hanging vine dangling near the side of the mattress that has managed to make its way through the cracks of the window. In the upper left corner of the red room is a hippie-like poster exhibiting drug paraphernalia use. The poster states marijuana in big white letters, and just under that it says in small red letters, weed with roots in hell. Just below the red letters, you see a red hand surrounded by six joints and a girl in a gown and a robe to the bottom right of the poster looking downwards. At the very bottom of the poster, it says, Weird orgies, wild parties, unleashed passions. The photograph, like the red ceiling photograph, could be depicted as being erotic and have that vulgar feel. I suspect, but don't know for sure, that these two photographs were possibly taken around the same time period. The photograph, the red ceiling, has great notoriety and has attracted not only musicians and bands, but directors, too. One director in particular, David Lynch, who is very good friends with William, is also a big fan of William's work. David has stated in the past that William Eggleston is definitely his favorite photographer, and many people in the art world have gone as far as stating that David Lynch's dreamlike visions you see in his movies and films have been inspired by photographer William Eggleston's work and his stories. A quote by William Eggleston. I think my photographs are components of the very book that I am in the process of writing. These inspirational, dreamlike visions seen in William's photography are reflected back in David's films. You see in David Lynch's film, Twin Peaks, similarities with William Eggleston's The Red Room and The Red Ceiling photograph. These similarities can also be seen in David Lynch's Red Room from Twin Peaks, with the zigzag floor and the blood-red curtains hanging on the walls of the Red Room. The Red Room and Twin Peaks was a perfectly insane place that came out of David's mind. All of these scenes inside the room were filmed in reverse, 
and the lines were spoken backwards. And when then played backwards, it gave a very creepy feeling to the place. You can see and feel a similar sensation in William Eggleston's The Red Ceiling photograph and David Lynch's Red Room. These similarities are very evident and somewhat eerie. This concludes what I spoke about in my father's biography about William Eggleston's photograph, The Red Room, and David Lynch finding his inspiration from William's photography and his photograph, The Red Room. David Lynch liked William Eggleston's photograph, The Red Room, so much that he put that photo and others taken by William Eggleston on exhibition at his Festival of Disruption from 2016 to 2017. David's Festival of Disruption brought together some of his favorite artists to help expand other people's consciousness through creativity. His festival raised funds and awareness for the David Lynch Foundation. David's foundation provides transcendental meditation to people suffering with stress and anxiety. His festival of disruption takes place twice a year in the fall in New York City and in the spring in Los Angeles, California. The festival included music from musicians and bands such as Robert Plant, St. Vincent, Bon Over, TV on the Radio, The Kills, Laura Marlene, Sharon Van Etten, John Hopkins, Reggie Watts, Sky Ferreira, Angelo Badalamenti, Caitlin Aurelia Smith, Shushu, and Rye. There is talks with David Lynch, Mel Brooks, John Malkovich, Bill Hatter, Ron Dern, Kyle McElligan, Blondie, Frank Hay, Ed Rusha, Pet Holmes, Sherry Lee, and Twin Peaks collaborators. The DJs spinning records at the event were Moby, Quest Love, Shepard Ferry, and Jason Bentley. There was also an art exhibition with paintings by David Lynch, photography taken by William Eggleston, a Brian Eno's reflection with virtual reality, Chris Stein, The Red Room by Polaroid Originals, and choreography, Ryan Hefton. I think the highlight of the festival, in my opinion, was David Lynch reading off his vocals that were played in Flying Lotus song, Fire is Coming. The song reminded me a lot of my father's life and his unsolved murder. It reminded me so much of it that it was disturbing to me. I want to share with you all what David said in the lyrics in the song. Then you can get a better opinion yourself about the song and if you think it relates at all to my father and his unsolved murder. I think it relates to my father and his unsolved murder because, like David has said before and others, William Eggleston is reflected back in David Lynch's work as well. Here's how the song went. The yellow phone on the wall started ringing. Tommy jumped and ran across the kitchen and picked up the receiver. Hello, he said, a little out of breath. Tommy's father was down in the basement woodshop cutting a piece of clear pine on the table saw. The sound of the saw was screamingly loud, and a big plume of agitated sawdust was forming in the air. Tommy's mother was outside in the front lawn tending to a small flower garden. 
She was visibly upset about her flower's condition. She was observing a black film on the stems and leaves, then tried to wipe this black substance away while running hose water on it. But it was too greasy, and the water wasn't washing it away. The front door opened, and Tommy appeared behind his mother. Mom, there's a phone call for you. Tommy's mom stood up and turned, the garden hose in her right hand shooting water. Who is it, she asked. I don't know. It's a man. He said you would know what it's about. Tommy's mom stood frozen for a moment, and Tommy saw lines of worry racing across her face. Something else scrambled into Tommy's awareness. He saw that the sky was noticeably darker than usual, and he saw a huge red-orange glow move on the horizon. Just then, a man appeared running frantically in the street, the man yelling, Fire is coming! 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 So what did you think about the song? Very creepy and strange, wasn't it? If you thought so, then you might want to check out the video because it's just as creepy and strange. I also want to share with all of you a track review of this song that I found on YouTube that was dropped on April 18th, 2019 by Anthony Fontana on his YouTube channel called Fontana. Anthony had a very good review of this song, and I thought it would probably be much better than what I could ever come up with, and it's so detailed that I wanted to share it with you all so you understand how, and I, most other people thought about this song. Here is the YouTube video, and here is how it went. Anthony can be seen in his YouTube video, singing, listening to the song with his headphones on, and then he fast forwards the song as he laughs. Then he says, Okay, wow, how did I even make heads or tails of that? I mean, it's blatantly a spoken word piece. It's blatantly a spoken word piece with David Lynch really kind of like taking the helm on the track. And very obviously, Flying Lotus is still in kind of directional and filmmaker mode. And the aesthetics of this rides over here also has the fingerprints of a theme firth all over it as well. Flying Lotus has been sort of collaborating with On Visuals for a little while now. I mean, it's twisted. It's unsettling. It's strange. It leads me to believe that this album could potentially be conceptual or maybe even a narrative base in a way or they just wanted to drop a track that felt almost like, almost like an extended teaser to the entire album because in a way, while we can see over here this is pretty much the actual track, then you see Anthony showing you the track to the album in his YouTube show. Then he says, 316, Fire is Coming, David Lynch. Obviously, there's a little bit of a track time added to the music video over here to kind of set the tone of the song with some visuals of all these kids dressed in fursuits, screaming and playing and going crazy. 
there were some elements of it that reminded me of the very creepy and theatrical and narrative based spoken word pieces that have made it into a number of Tom Waits albums over the years. I guess I could draw a comparison there. Outside of that, I'm not sure what I can really draw from this because, again, musically, there wasn't a whole lot going on outside of just a very strange, eerie instrumental embellishments happening in the background behind David Lynch's vocals, which were kind of twisted and manipulated and the intensity of that increased as we got closer to the end of the track and the way that the instrumental and suddenly this beat was kind of building up at the very end of the song it would kind of lead me to guess that maybe this track was going to segue really smoothly into the next song here and maybe in larger musical passages or something like that, but really that's all I can say is that it feels like an extended interloop like moment that I think could serve as really great spot on the album, but without the visuals, you're attached to this track and the music video to me, this song doesn't really have a whole lot of replay power. You know, unless you are short of listening to it within the context of the album itself, which is undoubtedly is going to be very holistic, maybe seamless, even cinematic kind of experience. So while I wasn't exactly blown away by this track compassionately or anything like that again, I was left unsettled, kind of disturbed, ears wanting more mouth watering wondering where we are going next with this and finally i'm left with a lot more questions than when i had when i started before i played this video and the song this concludes the track review for flying lotus song fires coming by anthony fantano on his youtube page called Fantano. I was also left with a lot of questions just as Anthony was left with a lot of questions at the end of the song. Questions like, did David Lynch get inspired from my father's unsolved murder from William Eggleston's false claims about his unsolved murder story he has put with photographs taken by William of my father and his home on MacArthur Street in Greenwood, Mississippi to help him write this song? This is my question, and you would think that this would be the case because of all the similarities in what was spoken about in this song and how it matches the similarities in my father's unsolved murder. David is going to talk about a kid named Tommy. Well, my father's name is Thomas, and if you think about it, Tommy is just a short way of saying Thomas. David wants to talk about a fire. Well, my father died in a fire. The similarities are very evident and very eerie. David's Festival of Disruption also offered a lecture about Transcendental Meditation and its benefits with school children, veterans, and anyone else who is willing to learn about meditational practice to help you throughout your life and heal yourself from different types of trauma. Singer and musician Paul McCartney, who is also a good friend of William Eggleston, congratulated David Lynch on his foundation on October the 11th, 2010, that has raised the funds to bring Transcendental Meditation to over half a million inner-city school kids. 
David Lynch's foundation was started by David Lynch in the year 2005. Ten years ago, Paul McCartney shared his heartfelt thoughts about David Lynch's foundation, and I want to share to you all what he said because Paul's views on David Lynch's foundation I completely agree with. Here's what Paul said while David was in New York getting ready for the David Lynch Foundation to put on a performance and speak about the benefits of transcendental meditation in a benefit. Paul and David said this during their conversation in New York on October the 11th, 2010 in this YouTube video that is called Paul Congratulating David Lynch on His Foundation. The video can be seen on David Lynch's Foundation YouTube channel. David Lynch questioned Paul, What are you doing here in New York, and what are your thoughts on the now? Paul responded back with, The idea of what you're doing of the putting this transcendental meditation into schools, I think it is a fabulous thing. I think it's all very well to talk about it, but the thing is, when you actually put in the mainstream, I think that's very important. That's the foot in the door. The people can then devout where the David Lynch Foundation has put the program into schools, the result or these. I think this is what people need. They don't need high-minded talk so much as results. For you to be able to say the kids love it, the kids on the West Bank love it. The kids in Brazil love it. And you're actually getting results. To me, it's like a seed that for sure, if you take a great seed, an oak, and you don't put it in the ground, it's pretty guaranteed you won't get an oak tree. But if you put it in the ground, there is a very good chance you will get an oak tree. David responds back at the end of the video, stating to Paul in a very sweet and kind manner, You're so beautiful, Paul McCartney, that you're doing this concert and going into support for this transcendental meditation. Everybody really appreciates it, and it's going to send the most positive message to the world and really help things. So bless your heart, man. Aw, I was really touched by what Paul stated to David about his foundation and how it provides transcendental meditation for so many people who needed it. And it's true, transcendental meditation is very beneficial to everyone. And today is December the 3rd. David Lynch is holding a free live event Thursday, December the 3rd at 7 p.m. Eastern Time called... Meditate America. Meditate America is an upcoming benefit concert hosted by Yannick filmmaker and renowned Transcendental Meditation advocate David Lynch and his organization, the David Lynch Foundation. The event will be a celebration to raise support to bring free Transcendental Meditation TM training to adults and children in need, including healthcare workers on the COVID-19 front lines, veterans battling PTSD and depression, and families living in at-risk communities. The event will also highlight HEAL, the Healers, now a new initiative to bring TM to the medical providers who are working tirelessly to end the pandemic. Highlights of the celebration will include live performances from Graham Nash singing Our House with Children's Choir, Elvis Costello singing What's So Funny About Peace, Love, and Understanding, Keisha and Jim James singing the Bob Dylan classic I Shall Be Released, Sting singing One World is Enough with Angelique Kidjo and then Fragile Solo. Hugh Jackman and Deborah Lee Furness interviewing Katy Perry about her meditation practice. You also see George Stephalopoulos, 
Robin Roberts, and an ABC chief medical correspondent, Dr. Jennifer Ashton, hosting the event. The event educates people about the benefits of Transcendental Meditation. Well, later on in the event, a group of meditation with all the attendees of the event from all over the world is held. All proceeds to the free virtual event go to the David Lynch Foundation. This is the event for you if you want to learn more about the benefits of Transcendental Meditation. Tickets to the event, which will be streamed live online on December 3rd, are free. All attendees can register to virtually attend at the Meditation America website or Eventbrite. Are you going to attend now that you know so much about Transcendental Meditation? If you didn't before, are you interested in learning more about the benefits? Well, if you are, then go ahead and attend. It doesn't hurt now, does it? This concludes my review of William Eggleston's photo untitled 1970-3, The Red Room, and how William Eggleston's photography is reflected back in David Lynch's films and music. Thank you for listening. Please subscribe and leave a comment. I'll see you next episode. Until then, goodbye everyone.